uh, she experienced uh, how God provides uh, in her life. So firstly, I would like to ask Sister Angela to give your story for us. Thank you, Brother Ferry. Um, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak um, for those of you who haven't met me yet, my name is Angela, and um, I have been a believer of Christ um, since I was young, and, um, but I've only got to know about Jesus when I was a teenager, and, um, and uh, well, all of us, we have been through the teenage years, I'm sure everyone would agree that teenage years are one of the most challenging, but I thank God, when I look back at my life, being a child of God, um, Despite life, sometimes will throw very unexpected curveballs at your life. Um, having God to rely on is the most comforting, um, and, and, and God will always give us that special strength when we needed it. Even God would let us um, realize our strength when we don't even know we have that strength to, to keep going in our life. And um, so today, I would like to share a testimony about how God helped help me and my husband with our journey with um, finding our home. Um, of course, we all dream of um, having a home that we can live in, that we can call our uh, a place we come home after a long day's work. And um, a few years ago, my husband and I, we sold our family home, and we were looking for a house um, to buy and move into. And at the time, um, this was five years ago, um, the house prices were already, we, we considered house prices five years ago were quite expensive already. And um, there was, we know, uh, it was very highly competitive. Yeah. And if you have been to an auction, you will know that in Australia, auctions are, are very stressful. And um, my husband and I, we, uh, we looked at different houses. Um, we, we, didn't, we didn't have very high expectations, but at the same time, we go to auctions hoping that we would um, at least bid and maybe successfully can get a house that we can live in. And, um, but unfortunately, after many auctions we went to, or even now we provided a negotiation, we could put in an offer for a house, but it all seemed to be knocked back. And, um, and, uh, and at the time, um, my husband and I, we, we, we prayed about it, and we were still quite, I, I was a, a little bit more, I, I guess a bit downhearted, because um, uh, I, naturally I'm worried, because it seems, uh, we've just sold our house, and we, if we come by the next house, where, where are we going to be? And um, so when it felt like it was almost impossible to find a home, I thank God, because at the time, during one of my reading in the Bible, God actually let me come across with a particular Bible verse. Um, that is in Psalm 84. I'll read it out for everyone. So during one of my evening readings um, the Bible, God made me um, see this Bible verse. This was from Psalm 84, verse 3. Psalm 84, eight, verse 3 says, Even a sparrow has found a home, and a swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Verse 4. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. And um, when I read this Bible verse, it talked about the sparrow has found a home. So I was very glad when I read that because um, I also remember there was another Bible verse um, in, recorded in Matthew that um, the Bible, the God's words told us that um, even the birds in the air, they don't need to worry about where they will live or where they will, uh, where they will find food. And God takes care of the birds. How much more so God would take care of us when we rely on God. God would always provide somewhere for us to live. God will always provide us somewhere that we can work somewhere we can find a place that we feel comfortable to call home. So at the time, I was actually um, greatly comforted um, by God's words. And, um, and, I, and I knew that um, I shouldn't have to worry too much. So after that, um, soon after that, uh, one day my husband asked me if I remember that while we were inspecting the different properties, they, they, we come across, we inspect, inspected one of the, it was a vacant land. and. Um, and that land was on the main road, and it wasn't just a, a, a land, it was actually, um, what happened was somebody subdivided their front yard, and uh, even though it was a front yard, but it didn't even look like a garden, it looked more like a junkyard, um, like a, lots of trees, jungle, um, anything but Burke's backyard, kind of, 
lame. And then I, I just remember, yes, I remember that one, but that, that one didn't actually, um, wasn't even close to my wish list at all. Plus it was just a vacant land on, on, a, on a location that I didn't think too much about. So my husband said, well, how about let's have a look at that land, see if it's still available. Because my husband, he, he said, if we can afford to buy the land, maybe we can buy it, build a house that can suit our needs. Which sounded fine, if we can get to build a dream home, I think we, we all wanted to. So at the time we um, inquired the agent about the land, whether it was still available. And um, thank God the land was still um, available, and we inspected it again. And um, at the time I just prayed to God that, um, if, if God, if this was um, part of your plan, um, then may, yeah. may this offer be accepted. Yeah. So um, we made an offer on, on the subdivided land, and um, and thank God, um, in the end, um, this time, it, it um, <coughs> was actually accepted by the vendor. So we were happy that, uh, oh yes, we now have a land that we can actually build on. But we didn't realize at the time that it was only the beginning of um, trial of our faith, because um, guess how long it would take to subdivide the land? I actually um, asked the local um, land surveyor, and um, so on average it takes about one year to subdivide the land. But um, for us at the time, we didn't realize the vendor hasn't actually finished subdividing the land, and the contract that we were given to sign was actually the wrong type of contract. The contract that we signed, we could actually, there was no sunset clause, so, um, and we don't even know when the land would finish subdividing. So it was basically open-ended, <coughs> depending on the vendor. The vendor could take as long as he liked. If he wanted to, he could take a long time, and we still had to go through with the transaction. So, um, so while waiting, at first we were excited by the prospect of being able to build a new home. But however, when, um, when months of waiting turned into years, and um, I even made inquiries at the time to the council, city council, or the local surveyor, trying to find out any clues about how long the waiting would be. And um, even the city council, um, when I explained my situation, I said, I don't own the land, but I'm in the process of buying the land. Can you tell me how long is this process? Even the council will say that, um, well, technically, you are not supposed to buy a land that hasn't been subdivided yet. And I thought at the time that that wasn't much of a help. But um, so that only made me worry a lot more, uh, whether this will eventually happen or not. And um, on top of that, we already engaged a, a, a builder. And for those, those, those of us who have made a, a building process, you will know that with a builder, you have to sign a contract even before you start building. And the builder can wait for you, but after a certain time, the builder legally can charge you more money while they wait for your land to become title to you. So we're just waiting upon waiting, and um, we were also worried with the stress that we may have to pay the builder as we wait. And um, so um, at the time, I was very anxious. Um, and when I come to church, um, it was on my mind about the whole process. About I kept thinking about what can I do to make the whole process quicker, or what can I do to help. But uh, knowing there was not much I could help, but I still wanted to, to try and think of ways that could help. And But when I was praying in the Spirit, God actually um, reminded me of a particular Bible verse that came into my mind when I was praying. And I thank God because it really comforted me. And uh, God was actually reminding me to let go of using my own methods. But instead, I should just rely on God's spirit. Because the Bible verse that came up, actually, it was from um, Zechariah. But when I was praying in spirit, I didn't know which Bible verse it was. But, um, so that was recorded in the, um, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. So the Bible verse that came to my mind when I was praying was um, uh, spoken by the word of God uh, to the prophet Zerubbabel. Um, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. So this Bible verse at the time reminded me a lot about how I, I, I haven't been relying on God's spirit as much as I should. And that by relying on God's spirit, everything will all work out in the end. So that really comforted me a lot. I, I learned to, um, to just rely on God's spirit. And that when I pray, I should just tell God of my worries. And every time when I feel a bit anxious, God would always calm me down. And I, I even started um, going from having anxiety and anger towards the vendor as we wait with no end. 
Waiting was easier if you know how long you could wait. But when you're waiting with many months and no end, even up to years, that was quite challenging. So I really thank God that um, while waiting, uh, every time I felt it was getting a bit hard um, about waiting or I wasn't at peace, um, I could pray to God and I always felt renewed in the strength as if God was saying that, God was telling me, I know, don't worry, it will all work out. And, uh, and I knew that this strength doesn't just come from me and it certainly doesn't come from wishful thinking, but it came from the Spirit of God that our God is the one true God, and that He is always there guiding the whole situation. That, yes, it could take a lot longer for things to happen, but whatever happened in God's time is always the best time. And, and things may always not work out the way I thought, but it'll work out better in the end. So I, I thank God because um, uh, when I was um, going through the tough process of waiting, it wasn't just myself waiting, I knew that it was hard on my family as well, especially on my children, yeah. and, um, because they, waiting one year is a long time, but to a child, one year could feel like eternity for them, and um, and at, at the time, uh, they they already, after one year, they already stopped yeah. asking me when we'll get the house, because it wasn't even a house, it was a, a land, and um, so thank God, because throughout the whole waiting process, I. I was able to see the, the love and care of our brothers and sisters. Uh, those of them who know, know us well would ask us how we're going and they would comfort us. And um, even the ones that know us well would learn not to ask us many questions anymore because they know that if there's any updates, we will tell them. Okay. Um, no point asking, otherwise probably will make us more anxious. And um, so in the end, thank God, after three and a half oh. years of waiting, our solicitor, as she said to us, your land will settle on in November 2020. So that was three and a half years since we signed the contract. So we were very happy because finally there was a date. There was an actual, um, it's all happening. But little do we know, there was another setback. So on the day of the settlement, we were expecting a phone call from the solicitor to say, um, congratulations, you got the land. But instead, we got a phone call from the solicitor to say, sorry, there's been another hiccup. The other party hasn't got their documents together. The land is actually technically hasn't finished subdividing it. So, uh, and then, so we have to wait. So the next natural question would be, how long is the wait? How long is the delay for the next settlement? Typical of the solicitors, they say that we have to wait for the other party to tell us. At the moment, it could take anywhere, it depends. They say they'll do it as quick as they can, but we actually don't know. So there was another waiting. So if any of us have actually, um, wanting to wait for the keys to your house and having to be told that you have to wait don't even know how long that was another little challenge um, for me i wasn't it didn't, it didn't matter because at the time if you already waited three and a half years i'm sure another month would not make much difference but i remember at the time my husband who, who, who's an engineer he likes to paint plan things he likes to see things that were a deadline so my husband at the time he took the whole month off in December, thinking that um, we would have got the land in November, he was ready to go and cut the trees and, and get started on the land, yeah. only to learn that in the last minute that we have to wait another long time. So my husband was getting a bit very anxious as, um, as, as a few days of waiting turned into another few weeks. And, um, and But I remember at the time, I just kept praying, and my husband just said, Aren't you worried? Uh, shouldn't we do something about it? Should we actually get a, a lawyer? Or maybe not a, just a solicitor, maybe a lawyer, maybe we just... But uh, I, I told my husband, let's just pray about it. And, um, and thank God, because at the time when I prayed, God actually um, told, God, God made me, um, it, it was as if God was talking to me. And God told me that, um, that it will happen, but it will happen in, in the nick of time. That's what I felt when I was praying. And sure enough, just before, because by then it was getting closer to Christmas time, and we know what happens after Christmas, or between Christmas and New Year. That's another time that no one would wait to do anything. So, um, and we, we, we were just waiting. And uh, thank God, just the last day before Christmas, which was um, on the 24th of December, and, um, and as I was just driving home after work, I was just thinking, the solicitor did say that she's going to call me soon to update me. 
And then also, as I was just thinking about that, just as I was thinking about that, five seconds later, I got a phone call on my mobile phone. So I had to pull over on the side of the road. And the solicitor actually told me the news I wasn't even expecting. She said that, oh, congratulations, the land is now finally is settled now. And um, you can actually go onto that land and now, it's now come through. And I said, as in, from this moment, it's actually, has, we can actually go onto the land? And she said, yes. So I really thank God because um, that was just one day before Christmas. And the solicitor said that um, uh, I can now start my Christmas holidays. She, she was actually supposed to be on holidays already, but because for us, she was also worried for us. She even um, came to work on the day when we were actually on her holiday already started. I really thank God the solicitor was, went above and beyond for us. And um, in the end, we were able to um, get the land. But that was a, a, a journey that we, um, we finally can say that we, there was a, a bit of an ending there. So um, I thank God because um, even though right now we have certainly finished building the house, uh, as we know, build, building a house in, in the pandemic is probably another stressful level. But thank God, uh, not, none of that compared to the amount of waiting. But I didn't know how long the wait was. So throughout the whole process, uh, I've learned that um, that we have to be patient when we wait for God's time, and that we God will always comfort us when we seek Him, and that if we ever want to know God's will for us, all we have to do is um, kneel down and pray, because God would always use His words. When we do, I, I realize when we read our Bible, um, God will always talk to us from the Bible, and God would always um, remind us of His love, and that He will always provide for us. No matter if it's our clothing, our food, our daily life, and our, our shelter. So we don't have to worry about where we live, or um, uh, we, we don't have to worry about it at all. Because God will always provide. So, um, and all these things are just temporary anyway, um, because we have the eternal heaven and home in the future that God is preparing for us. So that is the greatest hope that we have. And we thank God that we have this living hope that we always have that heavenly home waiting for us. And we know that it doesn't matter what property we live in, these are only just temporary. It's just a temporary shelter. But the eternal home is always waiting for us. And that is what we all look forward to the most. So I, I thank God for um, guided my family, because if I ask, if you ask my children now, their patience has now reached another level. And their recognition of mom and dad is under stress mode. They're very good at recognizing that. So they're very good at trying to get out of mom and dad's way if mom and dad seems a little bit stressed. And we've learned to also rely on praying to God together. So thank God. Um, my, my testimony ends here. May all glory be given unto God. Thank you, Um, Kendra. Um,